we reached uh, already our seventh appointment uh, for consoling the heart of Jesus. And uh, this time we go ahead with what we already started, you know, last time by talking of Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque. So we we said already some things, the main things about her. We talked about her uh, life, and uh, to today I will only spot some 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 point that it's needed in order for us to remember the main things. So first of all, Saint Margaret. Uh, well, we know that she was born in sixteen forty seven, and she died in sixteen. 90 October 17. Her first vision of uh, Jesus was uh, on December 27th, 1673. And after 18 months, 18 months later, he ha she had the final vision in 1675. The visions revealed the devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus. Above all, uh, mm, Jesus talked to her about the reception of the Holy Communion on the first Friday of each month, a devotion that we still have. The Eucharistic Adoration during a Holy Hour on Thursday, she was instructed to spend an hour every Thursday night to meditate on Jesus' agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. So it's staying with Jesus. While he was asking to the disciples, stay with me for one hour, and then they fall asleep, right? Uh, so that is what we, we, what, what we want to do in the Holy Hour. Uh, it is to stay with Jesus, to console the heart of Jesus. You know, that, that is uh, properly what we are talking about. And uh, exactly so, uh, and then Jesus talked also about the celebration of the feast of the Sacred Heart, which will will be in the, the end of our meetings here. So, the um, the first apparition we said something already about it. So December twenty seven, sixteen seventy three. Uh, it was uh, received by Saint Margaret during the feast of Saint John the Evangelist. And uh, she was in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. We said, how important is this? And, uh, well, she claimed that Jesus had permitted her to rest her head upon his heart. And then he disclosed to her the wonders of his love. Above all, I just I'm summarizing what we already said. Uh, in the in her diaries, and Margaret said that uh, she felt wholly penetrated with the divine presence. She lost all thought of herself. She abandoned herself. In the divine spirit, uh, she yielded up her heart to the power of the love of Jesus. And uh, yes, when she put her head on the breast of Jesus, uh, he explained, he opened, he disclosed to her the, the marvels of his love. And that is the point where Jesus said, My divine heart is so inflamed with love for man. And uh, Jesus took the heart. He asked for the heart of St. Margaret. And he placed it, he placed the heart of St. Margaret in his own heart. Okay, so this is what we said already last time. Then, still in the first uh, apparition, uh, there is Jesus giving her a, 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 what, he, what he calls a precious token of his love. What is this? 
Um, so Jesus put on the side of St. Margaret, uh, he says, a little spark of uh, the glowing flames of my love. This is how Jesus defines it which is nothing else than a pain. A pain in the side of St. Margaret, exactly where the lance, the spear, entered to, to, to reach the heart of Jesus, right? So the wound in the side of Jesus, so that was the gift, the mysterious gift, the token of his love that Jesus gave to St. Margaret. She had only the pain, not a wound. So she could feel the pain, but there was no bleeding. And you know, every time that there was uh, the presence of Jesus, every time that there was uh, above all on the first Fridays, you know, that uh, that side, the side of St. Margaret was in pain, more in pain than usual. So let's read what St. Margaret says about it. After such a signal, which lasted for a long time, during which I knew not whether I was in heaven or on earth, I remained for several days, as it were, on fire and inebriated with divine love, and I saw completely out of myself that I had to do myself violence in order to utter a single word. The effort I had to make in order to join in recreation or to take food was so great that it was all I could do to overcome myself, which was a cause of considerable humiliation to me. And yet, she says, I was not able to sleep because of the pain of the wound, which is so precious, precious to me. It produces such heat within me that it burns and consumes me alive. I also felt such a plentitude of God that I could not explain. So saints, above all those who have this um, mystic experience, uh, they, they, they receive the, this kind of gift. Uh, by God, by permission of God, of course. Uh, it, it is what happens with the saints that receive stigmata. This is a case of a st stigmata, of course. Uh, like St. Francis, like Padre Pio, like many saints, you know, that in different ways, you know, they had the chance to share the pain of Jesus, the physical pain. Actually, this is what uh, it already happens in a normal way. When we have our own struggles, when we have our own pains, when we are sick. And that would be the best, actually, to use. To use the pain that I already have in my body, to use it uh, to, in, in order to offer to God my uh, sharing in his cross, my share in, in his cross. Usually we do exactly the opposite, which means that when we have some pain, uh, any kind of pain, we immediately ask to remove it. Here it's Jesus giving some pain, and, and St. Margaret considered it a gift. So you see how, you know, when we enter in the logic of the saints, pain has totally another meaning, not the one that has for us, 
because even though we come to church every day, even though we receive communion every day, even though we have uh, Jesus Christ on the cross and we pray to Him every day, even though that, our logic is not this one. It, it doesn't really make makes a lot of sense if we are living in, in the mentality of this world. For the world, this thing is craziness. It's impossible to understand for the world. Uh, for those who have the gift to, to follow Jesus, to understand him, we know that pain is cause of salvation. Not because of pain itself. We are not in front of a cynic God. But because pain give you, gives you the chance to offer. To offer. To, to suffer with love is found of salvation. If, if you are not able to do that, and most of the times we are not, of course, you lose the merit, the merit of that, of that cross that you are carrying. We should be able to see a gift behind that cross that I am carrying. And, and if I succeed in doing that, that is very liberating. That is actually the solution of everything. Because all of a sudden I will realize that that burden that is so heavy, well, it's not actually a burden, it's, uh, it's a gift. So you see, here everything changes. So, uh, no, no depression anymore, because before I felt d depressed and distressed because of all the uh, burdens that I have to carry. And now we are saying that the more you have to carry, the better. It takes a special gift from God, a special grace from God in order to understand it. Okay, uh, let us keep on uh, reading. All right, one more passage. When Saint Margaret accepted the, this gift that she received from Jesus, it gave her also such a plenitude of God. And this is, uh, I think this is what really happens when we are able to accept our cross and to offer to, to Jesus. Yeah, a plenitude of God is the normal result of this kind of uh, uh, offering. Then, June 1674, so June 1674, it means that we are six months later, the start of the visions. So, June 1674, our Lord makes known the devotion of the first Fridays. Saint Margaret says, she writes in her diary, on the first Friday of each month, the above-mentioned grace connected with the pain in my side was renewed in the following manner. The sacred heart was represented to me as a resplendent, resplendent sun, the burning rays of which fell vertically upon my heart, which was inflamed with a fire so fervid that it seemed as if it would reduce me to ashes. It was at these times especially that my master, my divine master, taught me that he required of me and disclosed to me the secrets of his loving heart. And now is Jesus talking. You shalt, moreover, communicate, so to say communion, on the first Friday of each month. Every night between the Thursday of the first Friday I will make you share in my mortal sadness. 
mortal meaning uh, as a mortal, as a human being, my mortal sadness, which I was pleased to feel in the Garden of Olives, and this sadness, without you being able to understand it, shall reduce you to a kind of agony harder to endure than death itself. And in order to bear me company, in the humble prayer that I then offer to my Father, in the midst of my anguish, I, you shall rise between 11 p.m. and midnight and remain prostrate with me for an hour. Prostrate means that you totally have to lay down. Not only to appease the divine, divine anger by begging mercy for sinners, but also to mitigate in some way the bitterness which I felt at the time on finding myself abandoned by my apostles, which obliged me to reproach them for not being able to watch one hour with me. During that hour, you shall do what I shall teach you. But listen, my daughter, believe not lightly and trust not every spirit. For, listen now, for Satan is enraged and will seek to deceive you. Therefore, do nothing without the approval of those who guide you. Being thus under the authority of obedience, his effort against you will be in vain, for he has no power over the obedient. Okay, now let us comment carefully what we read here. Well, uh, first of all, uh, well, he said the time, you know, from 11 p.m. to midnight, which is, which is exactly the time that Jesus was in the garden. And he was in the moment, you know, facing what was going to happen. And he asked the apostles to stay with him, to watch with him. And they fall, they, they fall asleep. They fell asleep. Uh, so this is the purpose. Consoling the heart of Jesus while, you know, the apostles couldn't. So Jesus wants us to be the faithful apostles that are consoling him. And then, you know, Jesus is warning St. Margaret. Satan is enraged. Why? Because something new is going on now. Now, when, when you understand something, when the grace of God reveals you something, when you start a new path, when you set out for a new way of uh, holiness, Satan is enraged. Because what Satan wants is to keep everything just like it is. Never change. You know? And, uh, yes, uh, there, is, there is also not, not only Satan enraged, but also he is working against. He is trying to deceive you. So, here Jesus is warning, warning St. Margaret in order to tell her, look, here you need to do what is the discernment of the spirits. Because sometimes you may think that you're doing something for Jesus, but that's not the case. You're doing something for yourself. You're following your pride. You don't know. It. Maybe you're doing even good. You're doing something very good, maybe. But if you are out of obedience, then uh, you are not following God. Not even doing the best of the things. 
Jesus uh, gives here a very important criteria. Do nothing without the approval of those who guide you. And yes, we know that it can also happen that you want to do the best of the things. And those who guide you says, I don't want you to do it. Maybe you are in a parish and you want to propose to do more adoration. And the parish priest will tell you, I don't want you to do it. And you do it yourself as well. You do all the same. You don't listen. There is where Satan is deceiving you. So, well, what should you do? Should you give up? No. You need to be aware that here is the battle against the spirits. This is the battle against God himself. This is the battle against Satan. And to win, you need to follow the rules. So the rule is that if you want to do something good, you need to do it good. So if you receive, and you may receive, an inspiration of doing something great, amazing, you cannot do it yourself. You need always to do it in the way of God. So always obedience. If there is no obedience, you are not going to consult the heart of Jesus for sure. Because Satan has no power over the obedient. Can you believe that? Satan has no power over the obedient. His effort against you will be in vain. Because you are under the authority of obedience. This is uh, one of the most common uh, ways by which Satan succeeds in stopping good things, good inspirations, you know, the work of God, you know, inspiring pride, inspiring pride. And if you want to do what God is inspiring you, you always need to start from humility, from obedience. You need to follow the rules. You need to accept disappointment. Maybe you will see things that are not right. Still, you have to follow the rules. You have to be obedient. And this is a very good point, very important point to remember. Then, June 16, 1675, our Lord requests the devotion of First Fridays be practiced. During the octa octave in preparation for the solemnity of Corpus Christi, while St. Margaret was close to the choir grate, our Lord appeared to her upon the altar. Jesus says, he said in that moment, Behold the heart which has so loved men, that it has spared nothing, even to exhausting and consuming itself in order to testify its love, and in return I receive from the greater part only ingratitude by their irreverence and sacrilege, and by the coldness and contempt they have for me in this sacrament of love. But what I feel most keenly here is the point that I want to comment with you, is that it is hearts which are consecrated to me that treat me thus. So here, th this, what Jesus is saying now is that, uh, you know, he's talking about consecrated people. N consecrated means n not only priests. Well, priests are not really consecrated. Their hands are consecrated. But when, when Jesus here says people consecrated, he's referring to those who have the vows, to the religious, you know. 
So their hearts are consecrated to Jesus, no? And he's saying that precisely them are treating him that way, you know, uh, with uh, coldness, you know, coldness. Above all, in the sacrament of love. Yes, that's true that, you, you know, we, we might get, you know, the service to God like a job, like a job. That is a temptation. For us, uh, or for those who are not consecrated, you know, this, this sentence that we are hearing from the lips of Jesus is very important because it gives us the, the necessity, the importance to pray, to pray for the protection of those who are called to be consecrated. Because they are also deceived by Satan. So they, they get a great gift, which is vocation, the inspiration to follow it, the strength to keep on going. And then, you know, in time, you know, Satan is able to lower, to lower their love, their attention, their dedication. Uh, let's keep on reading. Jesus is still saying to St. Margaret, Therefore, I ask of you that the Friday after the octave of Corpus Christi be set apart for a special feast to honor my heart by communicating on that day and making reparation. This is an important word. A reparation to it by a solemn act in order to make amends for the indignities which it has received during the time it has been exposed on the altar. I promise you that my heart shall expand itself to shed in abundance the influence of its divine love upon those who shall thus honor it and cause it to be honored. <clears throat> okay, uh, we talk about reparation, uh, consoling, Consolation, repairing, reparation, you know, you're close, you know, that is the concept. And so what we said for consolation at the beginning, we need to say for reparation above all, because if we don't understand it well, we are describing a theology that, that is not really what we, what we need to believe. When we talk about theology, Theology is my idea of God, my conception of God. And we said that God doesn't need any consolation. And so, God doesn't need any reparation. So in what sense Jesus is talking about the reparation of his heart? And in what sense he wants a feast for his heart to be honored and celebrated? We are not talking about the, celebra the human celebration. It's not Je Jesus is not looking for that. So looking for the human glory. The glory of Jesus is only to show the face of God. And the face of God is the face of the most humble being in the universe. So honor for Jesus is when you do what he teaches. So when you are humble like Jesus, you are honoring. So the feast of the heart of Jesus is the day that I realize the love of Jesus and I start loving him not for him but for myself for the good of my soul so the feast of the heart of Jesus is not the birthday party you know, that I am organizing in order for me to have the gifts it's not that uh, Jesus he wants us to celebrate the feast of his heart in order for us to accede, to, to have access to that fount of grace for us. The desire of Jesus is that we don't do what the apostles did. The apostles, it's not that they abandoned Jesus and poor Jesus, no. They abandoned Jesus and put them 
because they separated themselves from grace itself, from the most important thing in the world, which is the heart of Jesus. And they, and they, and they forgot, and they left him, and they betrayed him, and they slept. So it was bad for this soul. What happened? And this is what Jesus wants us not to do anymore for us. Okay, so this way makes sense. So the, what we should really repair is to repair the damage that we are doing to our soul by neglecting the most important thing in the universe that is the love of God, the love of Jesus, the love of this loving heart. And that is hell. Hell is when I condemn myself to that coldness, to that separation, uh, imprisoned in my pride, blind, uh, because it is impossible for me uh, to see what is good for me, first of all, to see the gift of God that is free, is total, and is for me, for my salvation, for my happiness, and I cannot see it. That is, that is the prison, that is the condemnation. Okay. So therefore, I keep on reading, therefore I ask of you that the Friday after, okay, we read this already about the feast, then the devotion is made known to the world. So now the final conclusion. So our Lord uh, had Saint Margaret ask that a feast in honor of his heart be offered him by the church on the Friday after the solemnity of his body and blood, Corpus Christi, Corpus Domini in uh, Latin. That such homage be paid to himself by the King of France. We said already, already last time that the, there was an attempt but the King of France never did that, you know, to consecrate France to the heart of Jesus. And that the mission of propagating, propagating this devotion was to be entrusted to the order of the Visitation Sisters and to the priests of the Society of Jesus, which means the Jesuit. Why the Jesuit? Because the spiritual director of St. Margaret was St. Claude de la Colombia, who was a Jesuit. He totally supported St. Margaret. He consecrated himself to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and began to spread this devotion. So now we we cannot say completed, but we said, you know, what was most important to be said in order to understand um, the devotion to the Sacred Heart as it started in the visions given to Saint Margaret. And this is a very important point in order to understand what does it mean to console the heart of Jesus. Thank you.